In the sport, my dad, Eric Brown, um, found the team on DC when I was four years old. Uh, this is when, you know, my older brothers and sisters were all playing sports and, you know, a very competitive household and I wanted to, you know, be a part of that. So uh, my dad found a team from Washington, D.C. who did uh, wheelchair basketball and track and I participated for them from the age of four until about uh, 10 to 12. And how were you uh, in athletics as well? What did you do there? I did, I did track and basketball, both for that D.C. team named Air Capital. Um, so it was it was mainstream track at that point um, because the head coach of that team um, was a, a big track coach and a big track star. So, so did you do the uh, hundred or what did you do? Oh uh, man, I did the. Uh, uh, when I set records in the 60, 100, 200, 400, and eight hundred. Really? Yeah, you did <laughs> um, nothing, nothing more than the 800. I, I'm a sprinter. I don't do long distance. Um, uh, talk a little bit about the evolution of uh, the Paralympic movement in in this country and even internationally. It seems like the last 10 years, and you know, we've been asking everybody the same question. You know, that it seems like it's evolving. Certainly, a ways to go yet too, but it has evolved a little bit. I mean, it's just the recognition that's starting to grow. I mean, as the sports, I mean, uh, I think it's just because we haven't had the spotlight on uh, Paralympic movement um, for a long time. But, you know, I thought London did a great job. And, and since uh, 2012 in London, a lot of, you know, sponsorships and a lot of the networks are starting to recognize, you know, the, the time and dedication that the athletes are putting into this uh this lifestyle. I mean, that's what I, I tell a lot of people that this isn't this isn't a hobby for us. You know, we, we don't just find basketball fun. This is a lifestyle for us. We train five, six, seven days a week, um, and we're together for weeks on end, away from family, to to capture this this goal of winning a gold medal. So, um, again, like I said, it's a lot of lifestyle, and uh, people are starting to pick up on it. Talk about the chemistry leading into Rio and, and what it what it's going to take to beat teams like Australia and Great Britain. Uh, I mean, it's going to take it's going to take a lot. You know, like you said, chemistry and and teamwork and hard work are going to take um, are going to be needed to, to beat teams at that level. And I think you know this team has has got that special chemistry. Uh, this is uh, right now we're on currently like day. 12, 13, and, uh, and we're still having fun. I mean, we're still missing family back home, but you know, this is our family away from home. So um, this is a great group of guys to be around. And the aspiration for a gold medal and uh, project yourself two months from now in Rio. Uh, the aspirations are definitely there. I mean, I know uh, some of the guys that were on the Beijing team, you know, who missed out on the medal, um, turned around and went to London, which was my first Paralympics. and. Uh, they wanted to make sure they at least capture a medal. We got a bronze there, but you know, um, not quite satisfied until you're on the top of that that podium and hearing your national anthem. Um, so I, I think for us, you know, we're we're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for our family members and and you know the United States of America. So we're we're, we're pretty excited and pretty ambitious on what what's going to be happening here in Rio. Talk about your role in the team. Uh, you got guys like Nate underneath. You got Steve outside. You know, to just talk about uh, your role. Um, my role, uh, this specialty, I guess I would say, is uh, defensively. You know, for me, I love uh, having that intensity and bringing the intensity to the game. You know, you know, coach goes out and says, "Hey, this is the number one guy out there on the floor." I, you know, I, I want to be that guy that shuts them down. Wants to make sure that you know, prevent them from scoring the points that they need to win. Um, it's it's a vital part of the game, but you know, offensively as well, uh, getting Nate in the paint's key. You know, making sure that we uh, get the shots that we want, so, so that we're successful. Um, you know, for me, it's it's not all about scoring. For me, it's it's about making sure that the team has the best look to win, and um, and that's where it's at. Let's talk about your uh, personal life. Talk about your profession. Uh, you know what what that's meant for you. Uh, you got a little girl now too, so that's cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got we got a little girl. Her name's Soraya. She's uh, she's nine months um, with my lovely girlfriend Laura, um, and it's that's been a, a definite change, a little curveball in life. You know, training and dealing with the 
uh, a little baby, but you know what? It's awesome. She comes to my practices. She watches it. It's it's like she's actually paying attention. She follows the ball up and down the court. So, so that's awesome. Um, and, and when I'm not, you know, spending time with family and uh, or working on basketball uh, professionally, I'm in getting in the criminal justice field. Um, place where I grew up wasn't wasn't too. Uh, uh, wasn't too, I guess I would say, safe of an area, and that and that kind of inspired me to uh, to do something about it, become something in criminal justice. So I just recently graduated with my master's in uh, legal studies with a concentration in homeland security this last May. So uh, hopefully I'll be getting a job once this is uh, said and done in September, and hopefully we'll have a gold medal to to to, to boost that up. So uh, talk about you grew up in an athletic household. Uh, talk about disabled able body, you know, and that dynamic within a house. First of all, I got three sons, so I know it's already tense sometimes. So talk about that and then talk about the structure and the influence uh, your brothers or sisters had on you athletically. Uh, so I have three brothers, one sister, um, excuse me, um, and my uh, younger brother is, I only have one person under me and that's my younger brother. Um, and I'm the only one that's disabled, uh, congenital focal milia at birth, which is the underdevelopment of limbs. Uh, while you're in the womb, and uh, you know my older brothers and sisters didn't didn't take any pity on me, and uh, and you know what, and I think that's great because they got me to be the you know the player that I am today, training hard. So I mean back then it was a competition to see who was the the alpha uh, in the household, and uh, and it was it always seemed to be my older brothers, you know, because they played football and all of that. But uh, you know as we grew, as we grew older older and I've become more experienced in the sport. Uh, I'm willing to bet that I'm probably the alpha in the house right now, but you know, my brothers and sisters probably would argue that. Um, but uh, I mean, it's it's quite an it's quite an experience because they push you and and uh, and and they support you as well. So and I, I can't thank them enough for what they've done for me. So where do they think you going to Rio? Oh, they're excited. I mean, they they couldn't be more excited for me. Uh, uh, unfortunately, due to certain circumstances, they can't go, but they're definitely going to be following me. The NWBA, come roll with us.